folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Today's lesson, we're going to take a, a gold cube that uh, one of our students has brought over here that he owns. We're going to test some ore on it. It's pretty low grade ore. He was bringing a bunch of other samples over and uh, we tried them out. This is kind of the best free milling gold that he brought with him. And we're testing it to see how well it works on the gold cube. Uh, this particular test we did not use a surfactant because he said the manufacturer said you didn't need one so we thought we'd test that and we'll go through it. So here's the way the setup looked in the field. Brent here brought his gold cube with him while he brought his samples to have tested. We crushed them up. All those buckets have crushed rock in them. Unfortunately we didn't get the kind of free gold that we were looking for. There is an interesting silver mineral that may be a telluride. We wanted the samples assayed at, is that 0.166 you said? 0.16. 1, 0.16. 1, 1, 1, 1, okay, so we had one sample that assayed at a tenth of an ounce. We basically couldn't get any free gold out of it hand panning. So that's very curious. Now that he's got it all finely crushed, he can split it down, send another sample at his convenience to verify that. If so, then we, we're looking at a material that you cannot hand pan the free gold out of. There's a number of reasons for that, but in this case, there's a, uh, a high density shiny silver mineral in there. It looks brittle from the fracture on it. It doesn't look malleable, so I don't think it's uh, electrum, but it could in fact be a telluride or something like that. Now here's basically what happened. We have a gold cube. We actually had the uh, feeder up here. We were running it into what I'll call the catch tub and a recirculation tub. Now the catch tub was directly under the outfall and it caught the coarser materials. The recirculation tub was containing the water and it had a much larger settling area and it would settle stuff that took a lot longer to settle out. Now, the gold that we had here was running about 200 to 100 mesh, somewhere in that range, 0.003 to 0.007 inches roughly. And, uh, it's pretty fine gold. Wasn't a whole lot of it. It was about a 0.05 ounces per ton would be my guess. Anyhow, we ran it through the gold cube, checked the concentrates, the stuff in the catch tub, and the stuff in the recirculation tub. And the, the amount of gold in the gold cube was less than in one of my scoops, my standard size sample scoops, from the recirculation tub with a, a lot less material. So the concentration was higher, but the amount of gold was much lower. Basically, the highest amount of gold was down here in the recirculation tub. This material here had very little free gold in it, and the gold cube itself had, you know, for the fact that it was supposed to be concentrates, it was pretty bad. Recovery in this setup on this day was pretty crappy. Most of the gold made it all the way through into the recirculation water and that just means the gold cube was not doing its job on this material on this day with no surfactant. We'll be trying it later with surfactant but this is a good example of why you need to be able to test everything that's happening. If you were to just take this rock, let's suppose it was richer, but you crush it up, you put it through the gold cube, you wouldn't find very much. You say, well, it must be crappy rock. Well, no, the gold cube just wasn't recovering it. Uh, it's not surprising to me. Microfine gold really floats easily. A gold cube has a certain amount of turbulence that's built into it. It's a sluice, basically. It's a very gentle sluice, but a sluice nevertheless, and it didn't surprise me that it did not collect the super microfine gold. So, 
This was interesting though because when you look at the concentration here, it was higher than in the head ore. This is something that can happen. Just because your extraction machinery does not concentrate, it doesn't mean some other part of your process may not. This stuff here could be thrown away as far as free gold was concerned. It was almost barren. Since that was like 80 to 90 percent of the material, that meant between the gold cube and the recirculation tub, you've gotten like a 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 upgrade. So if it's too fine to concentrate in the conventional sense, you may be able to essentially wash it away from your uh, coarser um, rock particles, throw them away, settle it out, and then either use a very gentle gravity technique or else maybe a chemical uh, attack on the finer material. But anytime you can get a 5 to a 10 to 1 upgrade, that's an interesting parameter. So that's what happened today. It's not a whole lot of information, but I did want to bring it to your attention. The gold cube is not necessarily what you want to use for hard rock ore. It will work, probably works fine on certain hard rock ores. Coarser gold, maybe the surfactant would be a key. Haven't tried it yet, we will later, and I'll let you know on that. But this is why you want to be able to test everything. This is why that panning technique is so important. Happy prospecting, and keep it safe out there.